hands-on look at the 32-inch LG Ultrafine 4K display with Thunderbolt 3. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. How's it going ladies and gents, boys and girls? This is the LG Ultrafine Display. Now, if that name sounds a little familiar to you, that's because, well, LG already produces two products that bear that name that sell in the Apple Store, but obviously this one looks a little bit different than the LG Ultrafine 4K and 5K displays that sell in the Apple Store. It comes with a model number 32UL950, it comes with HDR, UHD 4K, Nano IPS, and Thunderbolt 3. So that is the real big difference between this 4K display and the LG Ultrafine 4K display that sells in the Apple Store. Thunderbolt 3 is in tow which is interesting. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but here's the display. Of course, it is a 32 inch display, so quite a bit bigger than the 21.5 inch LG Ultrafine 4K display that sells in the Apple Store. And we'll talk more about that once we complete the unboxing. Here's the arm that is adjustable. It pivots up and down and also tilts. And if you've ever used an LG display before, you pretty much know what to expect here. This arm is made out of plastic, even though it looks like it may be metal, it's not. Now the base stand on the other hand is metal and it features rubber feet and a little quick attachment thumb screw that allows you to quickly attach it to the arm. All right, so here's our accessory box. Let's briefly look inside. You have a USB type C cable, a Thunderbolt 3 cable, an HDMI cable, along with a display port cable. And you also have, of course, your power brick, which is extremely large, by the way, and the barrel connector on the opposite end. You also have your power plug. You have a USB-C to USB-A adapter. You have your cable organizer that attaches to the arm. You have a CD and you have some documentation. So that's everything inside the box. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is to assemble the stand in the arm, super easy. So here is the bottom of the arm. You just attach the stand right here and use the little handy thumb screw to screw it in, just like that. Make sure it's tight. All right, so now you just flip it around and sit it down just like that. So here is where the display attaches to the arm. And I'll show you how easy that is. So just grab the display rest it right on the arm attachment and let it lock into place. So there we go, we're all attached. So here we go, a typical LG display setup. Now it looks amazing, but keep in mind that most of the components are comprised of plastic. Uh, so the build quality isn't what I would describe as great. It certainly is not as good as the build quality on the iMac for instance. However, when compared to other third party displays, it's pretty good. Okay, so let's talk about ports because that is one of the things that really sets this display apart from others. You have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the rear, meaning this display supports daisy chaining. You also have two USB type A ports. You have DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0. You have a 3.5 millimeter headphone input and you have DC input for power. Now above all the IO, you have an exhaust vent and below the arm, you have a little button for detaching the arm. And I should also mention that this display is compatible with standard VESA mounts. So if you don't want to attach to that arm, you want something a lot more stable because the arm isn't that stable. Um, I would highly recommend going with the VESA mount if possible. There's also a Kensington lock below that to keep your display from growing legs and walking away, if you know what I mean. Now let's talk about some of the adjustments that you can make thanks to the monitor stand on the LG Ultrafine 4K display. You can tilt forward negative five degrees like that. You can tilt backward 20 degrees like this. Go all the way back. So you get a really nice backward tilt like that, 20 degrees. So that gives you a lot of wiggle room for flexibility in different viewing positions. But not only can you adjust the viewing angle, you can also adjust the viewing height just by pushing down or pulling up on the arm, like this. So you can go up, up to 4.3 inches. But not just that, you can also rotate this display 90 degrees for vertical viewing mode like this. 
So that can be very handy for certain applications where having more vertical real estate is a better experience. And some games employ what is called Tate mode where you view the content vertically for the best experience. Even browsing your Twitter timeline or certain websites can look better when viewed vertically. So on the bottom of the LG Ultrafine 4K display, you have a couple of speaker outputs. These speakers are five watt speakers. And in the middle, you have your joystick controller. And this is used to adjust options within the on-screen display. So we're gonna connect the power, and then we wanna connect our Thunderbolt 3 cable from our Mac to the bottom Thunderbolt 3 port because that's what provides up to 60 watts of power back to the Mac to charge your MacBook. Now, unfortunately, LG sent over the European version of the, the display, so I had to actually use this Zendur adapter in order to connect it to my power outlet here in the United States. No big deal, but uh, that's why the power adapter looks so weird. So here we are all connected to my 2018 Mac mini via Thunderbolt 3, running at a native resolution of 3840 by 2160 UHD 4K. So although this display shares the name LG Ultrafine with the current Ultrafine that's in Apple stores, obviously this thing looks quite a bit different than the original Ultrafine, which you see here, that's the 5K version. This one to me looks better overall, just with the bezels, how slim they are. It's like a piece of glass placed on top of a piece of matte black plastic. Not only does this display look cool design wise, but it's also nice and large, a 32 inch display running at 4K UHD resolution, which means in retina mode, the assets on screen are gonna be nice and large, which is great for those with less than perfect eyesight. To adjust the settings on the display, you use the little joystick at the bottom. That's also used to quickly adjust the volume if you want to. If you press in on it, you'll see this little quick menu. So you can use that to quickly navigate to your input list or go to your main settings where you can see quick settings, your full input menu, you have your picture menu, and here's where you can set up the picture mode of the display. You can set up a custom mode. There's some presets as well. I'm going to choose DCI-P3 and setting as custom gives you access to all the grayed out settings. There's also general, which contains things like local dimming, your buzzer, your power LED, etc. So just basic general settings. You also find PBP in the input settings, which allows you to display two sources at the same time. So like HDMI and DisplayPort, for instance. And there's also game mode for quickly adjusting settings related to gaming. Now, like in previous displays, LG employs the use of nano IPS technology. LG states that this means applying nanometer sized particles to the screen's LED to help absorb excess wavelengths of light, therefore improving color. And that allows this display to cover 98% of the DCI P3 color gamut. So I headed over to WebKit's website to test out wide gamut images, and I was able to confirm that yes, indeed, this display supports wide color. I was able to see the out of sRGB areas in the test images. Since this is an IPS display, you should expect great off axis viewing angles. In fact, LG says you can go to a maximum of 178 degrees, either up, down, left, or right, and still be able to make out what's on screen. Now this is a VESA HDR 600 certified display. So it does display HDR content. In fact, it recognizes it as HDR content when I was playing back on my Chromecast. However, take those VESA ratings with a grain of salt. Producing a good HDR display goes beyond pure brightness levels. For instance, backlight bleed is a problem as you can see here with our local dimming test. And this backlight bleed becomes more evident in darker environments. Okay, so let's go ahead and test out our 2018 MacBook Air. Let's connect it to the Thunderbolt 3 cable and also connect a Thunderbolt 3 accessory, the UA Aero audio interface directly connected to the display via Thunderbolt 3. So essentially we are using this display as sort of a Thunderbolt 3 dock, which is really neat when you think about it. So that means that I'm able to use this universal audio Aero audio interface, which is Thunderbolt 3 only, by the way, I'm able to connect to this thing from my MacBook Air just by connecting my MacBook Air to the display because the UA Arrow is connected directly to that second Thunderbolt 3 port. So like I said, it's sort of like a mini Thunderbolt 3 dock. But that's not to say that you should automatically daisy chain any Thunderbolt 3 device that you have. There are some exceptions 
when it comes to connecting to that second Thunderbolt 3 port on this display. Let me show you what I mean here. So I have the Samsung X5 SSD connected to the display and you can see the speed, read and write speeds using the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Speeds aren't bad, but notice what happens when I directly connect to my MacBook Pro. Notice the speeds now. You get faster read and write speeds when directly connected to the MacBook Pro instead of daisy chaining via the display. So what does this tell me? Well, it tells me that I should probably stay away from connecting eGPUs directly to the display. So you can see the throughput from device to host and from host to device is about 2,500 megabits. So how does the OpenCL data rate compare when I have it connected to the display? Well, you can see it right here, 1600 or so for the data rate. So a big difference between directly connected to the MacBook Pro and daisy chaining. So my conclusion is this, if you have a device that doesn't require a lot of bandwidth, like an audio interface, for instance, it's fine to daisy chain, but I would avoid daisy chaining eGPUs in really fast SSDs. Also, you wanna make sure that you're connected to the bottom Thunderbolt 3 port when connecting to your MacBook Pro for full 60 watts power delivery otherwise you'll be stuck at 15 watt power delivery and to be honest 60 watt power delivery still isn't all that great i wish it was at least 85 watts for full speed macbook pro 15 inch charging but that said one of the things that i really like about this display is that it works with usb type c connections as well so that means it will mirror a 2018 ipad pro via usb c and it should work with other USB Type-C computers like the 12 inch MacBook that hasn't been updated yet. And one of the things I really like about connecting to an iPad Pro, something that really shows its potential is that certain apps can output a separate screen, not just a mirror, but an actual separate display like you see right here. So in iMovie, this is super handy because it allows me to make my edits on the iPad Pro and view the full output right there on that external display. Super cool. So what's my conclusion about this display? Well, obviously I'm not a huge fan of LG's build quality. It's always felt a little lackluster in my opinion. However, I will say that this is one of the best displays, the best looking displays that I've seen from them in quite some time. I really like the bezels. The design looks better than the LG Ultrafine 5K and 4K displays that are sold in the Apple Store. You get that nice portrait viewing mode. Of course, you get all the IO, HDMI, DisplayPort, dual Thunderbolt 3 ports that also work with USB-C. So who is this display for? Well, it's specifically for those of you who don't care about 5K, who want a 4K display that can run in retina mode, which will produce nice and large readable assets on screen. And although it supports technologies like HDR, temper your expectations, at $1299, the LG Ultrafine 4K display is not cheap. However, its design, overall display quality, adjustability, and the amount of I.O. featured on this display make it worth considering for those looking for a large 4K external display for their Mac. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.